you're welcome to the Vermont House Transportation Committee. It is Friday, April 9th, and we're starting to see, we'll get an update on what we call the tulips soon, soon today. And um, we are here after floor, which was short. We have testimony starting at 1030 on uh, H262, a bill that uh, Representative Brian Smith is interested in. We have guests coming in for 262. And they're in. They are in. Lori, you're the best. So um, we're going we're going to do this bill, and then we're going to call it a lunch and a day. And I've got to do one errand before I can come back to this desk. And I know Representative Shaw has an appointment at two thirty, so we're gonna we're gonna work later, but. We're gonna we're gonna let the class go. <laughs> All right. Join me on house rules at noon. Oh, well, I can listen. I got. <laughs> we can listen in at house rules is a good thing at noon. Is it a training, Representative? No, Mulley? Just no. Okay. no, it's just yeah. us talking. Oh, oh, that house, not a okay. It's house rules, the committee. Correct. Okay. All right. We have uh, our guests are here. Get my agenda out and welcome to our room. And uh, this bill was introduced by Representative Smith. And so I'm gonna ask him if that's okay with you, Representative Smith, would you like to set it up? And we have uh, four witnesses with us. And I think the order would be first is Jennifer, then Aaron, then Michael, then Heather, if I have that right. And Aaron is not here. He's not coming. Who's not here? Aaron. Aaron. Okay. All right. Thank you, Lori. Um, Representative Smith, would you like to set us up, please? You're muted. Well, I'll start by thanking everyone for coming into committee again. <laughs> uh, House Bill 262 is a bill, it's an aggressive move to save lives in the state of Vermont. Uh, I've been trying for a couple of years to put this together correctly. And part of this bill got accomplished last year with the Senate approving uh, uh, workplaces and uh, school zones. So with all of the information that's going on about texting and driving, about how many people are actually not paying much attention, uh, I think this is a good time for this bill to happen. Uh, the move is to uh, increase the points and increase the fines. And having spoken with uh, the chief of police in Hardwick, he had suggested to me that the fines during this COVID time probably should wait until perhaps July 2022. Um, I wouldn't mind seeing this move ahead the way it is, but that could be that could be changed as well. Uh, if everybody gets their registrations back, and I, I, I mentioned this last week when he started talking about 262, in the little envelope that you have to tear apart and swear at before you can actually get to your registration to sign, it goes on to say, that texting and driving is one of the most dangerous forms of distracted driving. At any given moment across America, 660,000 drivers are using or, manip or manipulating electronic devices while driving. Uh, and it goes on to explain that distracted drivers aren't just a threat to themselves, they're a danger to everyone else on the road. In the Newport paper last week, there was an article uh, from the National Highway Safety Association it says here that nationwide between 2012 and 2017, nearly 20,000 people died in crashes involving a distracted driver. In fact, there were 3,166 people killed in motor vehicle crashes involving distracted drivers in 2017. In Vermont, from 2013 to 2017, 957 motor vehicle crashes were caused by a distracted driver. Uh, that being said, should be enough information 
to realize that people are ignoring the law and they're they're texting on their telephones, uh, talking on handheld telephones, um, and it needs to stop. And the, I, it, it apparently isn't working. And there, uh, I sent uh, Lori some side by side charts that, that that we've gotten from uh, Sheriff Harlow, uh, Orleans County information and state of Vermont information. If she's got those, she could bring those up at some point, but I'd, I'd like to hear from, uh, I hear some testimony from our witnesses and I can be quiet for a minute or two and let them go ahead and speak. Thank you. Thank you, representative Smith for, for, for setting that up. I think our first witness on this is Jennifer. Where there she is. <clears throat> Morning, everybody. Um, so did you just want me to speak about how I feel about what's sure. going on? Okay, thank sure. you, Representative. For the bill, so you typically, if we were coming in, we would state uh, for the record, your name and, and where you're from so that it would be captured. So people who are listening or later on, we know who you are. Absolutely, ma'am, thank you. My name is Jennifer Harl. I'm Sheriff of Orleans County. And uh, Representative Smith had come to me a few times in regards to this bill. And I agree completely that texting and talking on your phone is extremely dangerous. Um, we are, this art of my department as well as other area law enforcement agencies throughout the state participate in governor highway safety programs. And that allows us to have extra people out on the road paying special attention to distracted driving. Just the other day I stopped um, six people within two hours for talking on their phones in our area. So when I do that, when, when I stop them, I, um, if it's their first time, well, no matter whether it's their first time or not, I try to have a little bit of a conversation with them, educate them. People don't feel that it is, if they're talking on their phone, they don't feel it's the same as texting and driving. Um, texting and driving, I feel is definitely much more um, dangerous because you're actually, you know, you're not taking, you're taking your eyes off of the road. That is also much harder for us to prove. Unless somebody admits it to us, it is extremely difficult on roadside to prove that somebody is doing that. Um, but again, it's not impossible. So, you know, our officers write these um, site tickets and then they go to traffic court. And I, I meant to ask you, Representative Smith, if you had ever had a conversation with any of, of the judges to see what their thoughts were on this as well, just because they're the ones who are gonna be, um, you know, when we go to traffic court, we're gonna have to give our testimony as to what happened during the traffic stop. And then that individual, if they contest it, have the right to, you know, say why they can't afford it or why they don't think it was true and all this other stuff. So it is a very difficult, um, my officers do have a d difficult time in traffic court with these tickets. So, but again, I do, I appreciate that Representative Smith was willing to the fines during this time frame. I think, cause it's very difficult. Officers do not wanna, you know, put people into the point where they're gonna be suspended and just continue on that trajectory of, um, you know, keeping people down and out, so to speak. The points, it is, it is they're very aggressive. But again, this is a very, so I, sorry, I don't mean to babble. Um, no, sorry. You, we, we, I did have a sheriff's, um, we had a sheriff's meeting yesterday and the sheriff and the association overall um, agreed that this is extremely dangerous behavior when you're behind the wheel. We did feel that it was a little bit aggressive and I did speak with them about, you know, the fines possibly not happening um, during the COVID time. The points again, they felt were, you know, we just wanted to make sure that the judges were maybe being spoken to, how they were gonna to react to this. And again, because when you get to the, that level of points, and I agree with Representative Smith, the reason he wants the points raised is to wake people up so that they're paying closer attention and that they're not doing this behavior because that they're very close to losing their license and their insurance is gonna take a really hard hit. And that's what people are most afraid of. Usually when we go to like speeding or anything like that, they'll pay the fine, whatever the fine is for speeding, but they want their points dropped so that that doesn't affect their insurance. So that's just something for you all to think about. Um, so. Can I, can I ask a question from your professional standpoint? I mean, we've all been sitting in our houses forever and we're, we rely on the people who are out there on the ground. 
that this is continuing to be an issue. And, um, and we've made the steps that we've made in law with this and make, you know, making it and it's making it more difficult. There's, there's, there's a higher level of ramifications. Um, it took us forever to get it, get the texting piece out of the Senate for, for it felt like a decade. But um, so in your profession, you're still seeing this occurring at, at the same level as it was before, or are we seeing any improvement? Um, we definitely see an improvement when we're doing details because people know that we're out and about and we're sharing that education. Um, even during the COVID, I, when we were asked to kind of step back and not, you know, pull what, be more mindful of not my, more, sorry, it's Friday, holy cow, that we weren't stopping people for minor motor vehicle infractions. I considered this a egregious offense. So I told my deputies, if you saw this happening, um, then you were more than well, you know, obviously use precaution and things like that to make sure that we're all safe. But if you saw this happening, that you could stop somebody for um, being on their cell phone. So that's how I feel about that. Um, so I can't really tell you, I can't really answer your question if we've seen more or less. Um, I'd have to really go back and check the stats and things, go back a few years. Also, makes, there, oh, sorry, ma'am. Go okay. ahead, Representative. It makes me wonder then, um, if, if our goal is the safety piece and the goal is to stop this behavior or more, what then, then the question is, and is this the right remedy or is there a different remedy? What are the differences out there in order to get to that goal that actually changes the behavior? You know, um, that's a question we'll have to, I don't expect you to answer, but that's one that we should, we as a committee and others is, is legislators need to ask that question and figure out where 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 would we get that answer from yeah it is a tough question and there there was also something brought up in my in my meeting because some of this because especially the texting is so it's very easy if somebody clearly has a phone in their hand um you know it's very that's a lot easier for us to you know uphold in court and things of that nature but if somebody's got their phone down or you see it and they're doing this and you know we all know what they're doing but to prove that in court is very difficult. So maybe, you know, and there's also, if you cross the yellow line or cause you're distracted by something. So I don't know if you folks um, have ever thought or Representative Smith, have you talked about maybe just coming up with a distracted driving period and including all of these different things into that law? Um, I don't wanna put more stuff on your plate, but that was just, ideas and things that we would, um, that we were kind of toggling around with yesterday, but. Yeah. Well, it's very difficult. In schools, we talked, you know, kids are talked to about it. We, you know, we put the National Highway Safety puts out stuff, but it's, it's the same thing. People see it. And, you know, I've had people who have, you know, texted and they've driven right by me and they literally don't see a cruiser because they're, you know, that's, those are easy to give away, you know, those are easy yeah. tickets to write because it's just so blatantly. Um, you saw it. And yeah, and it's, but the more education you give, it's just like, you know, yeah. drinking and driving, you know, things like that. We educate and we educate and we lecture and we lecture and things of that nature. And it's just, it's very, it's a, it's a hard task. Yes. Yeah. Very difficult, so. And, and life tests first. Before, so, and it's tough lessons. I'll, I see some hands up, but I'll end with, oh, sorry. I made an observation of my own, madam, <laughs> when I'm out of the road that I should never have Led Zeppelin playing in my car. <laughs> I've been pulled over twice. And I went, I've obviously have, uh, um, I am impacted by the music. <laughs> so to turn the radio off or the, <laughs> that was my own behavior observation and how that's not working for me very well. All right, I have Representative White and then Representative Bartholomew. Thank you, Madam Chair. And if you want us to hold questions, I'm also happy to wait. If you're, well, sometimes we forget them. So we, I'm, I'm, I think people are comfortable, so go right ahead. <laughs> okay, great. Um, I really appreciate the Sheriff being with us today and look forward to hearing from the other witnesses. Um, but my question would be directly to you. Um, so I, I have concerns about this bill. And one of my concerns is that in my experience, I've seen that our public safety officers 
self-correct when they feel that a law is too strict or that they think that they're going to be giving too grave a penalty for an activity that they, they, and I, I don't want to frame it up in a negative light, but they kind of, they want to give someone a, the benefit of the doubt. So they will be less likely to put forward uh, anything above a warning if they're concerned that this person is going to lose their license or have long-term consequences for their behavior. I'm wondering if the fines are higher, if the points are higher, do you think your staff will continue at the same rate of, of putting forward, you know, when they pull over a driver giving a citation or will that decrease? Will we see a, a reaction to that where people are less likely um, to put forward a citation? I did share that concern that is, um... Definitely speaking with the area of law enforcement in our immediate um, county, that was definitely a concern um, that, like you just said, I don't have to repeat it. It is, yes, people, law enforcement officers, definitely when they, if they're, if they feel that the fines are too high or the points or something, they, and you know, that's part of our job is allowing us to have a little bit of discretion. Yeah. When we are doing these details and when I've seen my deputies who have pulled people over who have had subsequent offenses for texting or having their cell phones in their hands and they they usually don't have any issues with issuing that ticket uh -huh. um, because of the repeated offense. You know, I, I stopped an individual who hadn't had a cell phone violation in over six years. So we had another conversation and I said, you know, this is going to be logged and you know if you get stopped again this is what the ticket's going to be blah, blah blah you know and did a little bit more education so we try very hard to be reasonable and to be fair um but you're you're right it that is a very that is a concern okay. for sure well i appreciate your response and um it sounds like there's no one answer necessarily but it's good to good to know that that is something you're you're thinking about if this were to become law thank you you're welcome, Representative uh, Representative Bartholomew. Um, if if an officer sees someone driving who is swerving or crossing the yellow line and whatnot, um, but but there's no evidence they're they're not intoxicated and and you don't have evidence that they're on a phone or texting, is that an arrestable offense? Inattentive driving or the, I'm I'm guessing that it is, but I'm just curious. It is not an arrestable offense, sir. It's so so just crossing the yellow line, risking a head-on collision, um, that you can't get arrested for that, really? No, that's a fine. It's a traffic ticket and a fine. So what, what would be the charge then? Um, I would have to double check, but I think it's around three hundred and something dollars and it's like no, 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 I mean oh. no, I mean what 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 would the Tick, what would be the basis of the ticket? What would be the charge of? Um, it would be either failure to keep to the um, failure to stay in your lane or crossing the the line. I'd have to check to be sure exact language, but it would be so. To that if, if you're if you're seeing the the behavior that suggests inattentive driving, but you can't actually verify it, you can still issue a ticket. That yes, that is a possibility. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. But it would also be that would be the opportunity to think, well, you know, with your investigation of the yellow line, you would determine whether or not it might be caused from something else, which would allow you to think about it. But if it didn't, if I just told you it was Led Zeppelin, you would probably tell me to turn the radio off, but it would give you an opportunity to have that conversation with me. All right, that, but you would- Absolutely, be, you, madam, yeah. yes. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Okay. Thank you, Sh Sheriff. Do you have anything else you'd like to say on on the bill? If we've kind of making notes on this that uh, that you guys have met. You are part of the Sheriff's Association. You agree that it's dangerous. You think the remedies might be a little aggressive, but your concern is a around licenses. And um, you kind of hinted on the distracted driving all in one package. Did I get that right? Yes, thinking about that and talking with the judges um, to see how they're, because again, it's it would be very nice to be able to know that if when these tickets are issued, if this law is passed, that they're going to be followed through all the way down the line. Okay. All right. 
Well, you you all very much. I really appreciate your time. You're yours too, ma'am, because I know you're busy. You're welcome to stay with us. Um, uh, or if you need to go, please feel, but um, we want to welcome you, but we don't, we don't want to keep you if you, if you've got somewhere else to go. Madam chair, may I add to Sheriff Harlow's uh, testimony? Please, please representative. Smith. Thank you. You, uh, Jen, you had mentioned something about whether I'd spoken with a judge. I have not, <clears throat> but uh, representative McCormick and I have had talked about what would happen with tickets, with the fines or points. And, I, I believe, and I think probably Heather Gray can ad- address this better than I can, uh, that a judge can determine whether they want to throw the whole fine at the at the offender or reduce it or whatever they want. So you guys could go ahead and write the tickets for what, the amounts that are necessary, and then it's up to the judge. Am I correct? Yes, Representative, that is correct. So I just, okay. yeah, that's what I wanted you folks to also understand that we may be out there doing the work, you mm-hmm. know, issuing those tickets and so forth, but we have no control what happens when we go to traffic court. And with those, I can assure you with the points being in the way they are, you're, we're going to have a lot of people that will be um, contesting those tickets. And so that will be putting us in traffic court a lot more. Absolutely. So. All right. Thanks. Okay, I think next, and unless I'm wrong, is is uh, Heather Gray, and then Kellen Cloud. Did I get that right, sir? Okay, so Heather, go ahead, state for the record, and where are you from? Sure. Um, name's Heather Gray. I am one of the two traffic safety prosecutors for the state of Vermont. Um, so I've looked over the bill and, and I, you know, echo a lot of what Sergeant Harlow has said, uh, sorry, Sheriff, Sheriff Harlow, I'm sorry, has said, has um, said, this is, this is really, really dangerous and really tricky. I have seen, um, I used to be a deputy state's attorney in Franklin County, and I can recall back then there was one um, cell phone ticket that had been appealed. So it went to the um, criminal court for a full on jury trial. Um, it was successful, but there was that it was a, it was a, he said, she said, you no, know, did the officer see it? Because the defendant was saying, no, that's not what I was doing. So that does make it tricky, but it was successful, but, but I completely appreciate that. Um, and, you know, I, I've heard questions about, well, if we haven't seen changes yet, you know, what will it take? Um, I like what I heard Sheriff Hollow say about the educative piece, because I think that's huge. As a traffic safety prosecutor, in addition to prosecuting cases, one thing that we do is community outreach. It amazes me. We do impaired um, driving outreach. We do it to high schools and we do it to local, um, uh, like rotary clubs. So different uh, demographics. And it, it always amazes me how, how much education we're actually giving that people don't um, realize. And I will say, you know, I've been a prosecutor since 2008. And when I was a deputy in St. Albans, and I did that for about nine years, 90% of my cases were the vehicular crimes. And I learned a lot because starting, you know, I, I'd had my license for um, quite a bit of time, like to think I'm a safe driver, like to think I make good decisions. But I'll tell you, before I got there, I would think the same thing. It's just, a, you know, what's the big deal? You're just looking down for a few seconds. Um, and then, you know, I had one of my first fatal crash cases. And now I always have in my mind, even if I had that, that go back to that thought, what am I going to tell the victim's family when I crash into them? Because I was looking at myself and what was t- mattered so much. And that keeps me, but, but, you know, I have a whole different perspective than other people in the row that aren't in this field. Um, I also had learned um, that, you know, doing this and one of the things we always say in our per- presentations is that to statistically to send or receive a text is five seconds five seconds, you're not looking at the road. When you're traveling 50 miles an hour at five seconds, you go 300 feet, the length of a football field. So then I say to people, if I were to blindfold you and say, drive down this football field at 50 miles an hour, are you going to agree? And they kind of get that different, they realize. So I I think education is a big part of it. So I think officers do do a great job. Um, I have utmost respect for our officers. They do a great job of trying to educate and not just give the ticket. Um, And I think that makes it yeah, I think that makes a bigger impact ultimately. And I do think the five points here, because that will trigger my understanding an SR 22. So not only you'll have to carry that for three years on your license, my understanding. So it increases your insurance plus the SR 22 is additional. Um, 
And someone asked about just real quick about crossing the center line and if there's a other egregious driving with that, you know, crossing the center line and depending, and I know that we don't always like to do this and Sheriff Paolo is much better to speak about, there is the potential that that's negligent operation in and of itself that could be arrestable, but there'd have to be more than just the crossing of the center line. Um, but I'd heard more of like the weaving and the crossing, depending on what it was. And again, the officers out there in the field, um, I don't envy them because they have to make split second decisions and they shouldn't be arresting everyone that crosses. And I'm not suggesting that I'm just um, saying. So I don't know if there's other if there questions or anything that other things I can address. All right, let me just see. Representative White has her hand up. Please go ahead. Thank you, Madam Chair. Um, another concern I have for this bill is that we are moving away from I think punishments that take away someone's driver's license or have more long-term implications for their ability to work a job or kind of head down, that have the potential for someone to head down that slippery slope of um, poverty or to be stuck in poverty um, because of a, a defense. I'm wondering if you can speak to, in your role, um, if, there, if you think that a law like this would increase the potential for someone to maybe they they've made a few mistakes, they're at their third time, they've lost their license. This is a greater potential to happen if this law were to pass than in where we are, the status quo. Do you see this having implications for kind of that general goal that we're trying to get to where fewer people are having their license taken away or um, have implications for their uh, financial safety and security. So do you, do I think this will have more people getting their license taken away? Is that part of it? Yeah. Um, and do you um, think that, that is a, I guess, do, do you see the general goal as we seem to be moving away from that kind of punishment? Mm -hmm. um, yeah. Well, I, I mean, with the first, um, I, I don't think it would I don't think it's more likely or that it's going to add to people being having there more people having their life taken away. And here's my thought on that. I think um, there, there are certain people right now that drive the road, regardless if they have a license or not. And there are certain things that I'm not sure that we're ever going to be able to change that. And it's a certain mindset. I think that the people that there are a certain set of people that don't realize this is dangerous. And I think the five points is a huge wake up call. Um, and then if you keep, my understanding is it stays on your license, the points for two or three years, I can't remember exactly, but it, so after that time, those go away and you'd be starting again. The 10 points, you lose it for 30 days and then you get it back. So granted, if you pick something up again, so it's more of the habitual offenders that, that we would be, and, and in my thought process, if you get stopped for anything, let's say, chances are that's not the first time you've done it. So we're stopping someone who's already done this so many times, getting a ticket. Oftentimes, again, the officers do use their discretion. It's a warning or they look at um, circumstances and the judges also it's baked right into the laws. And this was discussed, but I think it's 2502 where the judges can say in the interest of justice, I'm not gonna give these points or I'm not gonna give this fine. Um, they, they certainly do have that discretion. So I think that, that it, keeping that, that, that all being in place is a really great um, system that we make sure that, I don't think it will add to more people getting a license taken away because um, the, first, the first hit is not a getting your license taken away. If you, unless you're in a work zone, which to me, I think you should lose your license if you're in a work zone and you're not paying attention or a school zone, um, but it's 30 days. And I, I, and, I, and I say that knowing that 30 days is, is no small thing in a rural state, but I still think that's an adequate one. And then you get it back and then I think that educative or that, you know, punitive hit, you understand and going forward. So I don't think it'll lead to more mess. Okay, um, that's, that's really helpful to hear. Um, one part of the bill is that I know Representative Smith was thinking about was like the juvenile side of things. And if I'm mm -hmm. correct, you would lose your license as a juvenile offender quicker than you would if you were an adult offender. I'm wondering if you think that that is the right course of action for us to treat that, to, to have a harder offense early on, I guess. Yeah, so for the juvenile offenders, is my understanding now, any three points on your license, you'll lose it for 30 days. Um, so that would mean one of these, you would lose it right away. Um, I actually think that is a good idea because the juvenile, um, 
Well, you know, clearly, and, you know, this has come up with, with a lot of things and, you know, um, our juvenile laws are changing and the um, talks about the, the, your brain forming your decision making. And I've always thought, especially my position, I'm like, well, I have someone that's basically using a lethal weapon on the road, but we're saying their brain's not formed. So we want to give them less of a hit. I'm like, I'm not sure how those two get married <laughs> together. I don't know if we need to be upbringing our drivers um, that the age, you know, I have two nephews who are now uh, 21 and 19, but you know, when they were 16 on the road, smart kids, but I'm not sure, you know, they always make the best decision. So I do think, and the thought of sooner rather than later with someone who's younger to get a hit, I do think the 30 days um, sooner for a juvenile operator um, is, is, uh, would be um, more helpful. I, I think that should stay. That makes sense to me. And I think they're going to see it actually has a bigger hit than maybe some adults potentially. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. I had one other question on a slightly different angle to this conversation, but um, I don't know, Representative, um, Madam Chair, I think I see someone with their hand up potentially. You do? Uh, <laughs> Sheriff Harlow has her hand up. Sheriff Harlow. Madam Chair, oh, can I? Sheriff, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Looking, I'm I just wanted to. Yellow hands on the screen. Go ahead. I'll, I'm sorry. I just wanted to. I think that that is a good idea with the younger people because not only is that going to affect them, it's going to affect their parents. Mm. So hopefully there's going to be more repercussions, not only financially, socially, you know, all that, but having a license is a privilege. So. I just wanted to make that comment that I agree with that. And I think it's gonna have more of an impact also on the entire unit, family unit as well, because that's gonna be, they're gonna have to bring their kid to school, sports, um, job, whatever. So it's not only just gonna affect them. But then again, this is where you're gonna see the court going to court and you know things of that nature. But I, I think that that's a good idea as well, so. Thank you. Some there's there's a reason I'm not on judiciary. It's not it's not a good place for me. But but you know I start to think about when you were mentioning the courts having served as long as I have on appropriations. The 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 cost in the court and the cost of time is something that that at least as legislators we have been sort of schooled a little bit on saying you you make these laws you it cost the system so much more and then we don't, we don't um, plan for or adequately supply the funding in response to our actions then, or, or we're not paying attention to it. I see, um, Representative White, were you, were, were you good? I had one other question, but I'm happy to wait and hold okay. off. Well, come on back when you're ready. Representative McCoy. Yeah, I just, to, to add on to this for junior operators, um, not, that my daughter got points on her license or anything, but when she first started, she got her license and um, we told her that no one else could drive the vehicle because we insured it. So no one else could drive the vehicle. Of course, I live in a small town and, you know, and I work in a you know, town clerk and my road foreman comes in one day and says, so I see your your uh, daughter's girlfriend in the car with, uh, you know, uh, driving your car with the boyfriend, I'm like, what? <laughs> so she was at a soccer match that night. And so she drives home and, and, you know, she's down in Wilmington or something. It's, you know, she gets home at 11. I told my husband, I said, you stay up and you tell her. So he's up. She comes walking in. He goes, give me the keys. She says, what? He goes, give me the keys. She goes, what do you mean? He goes, you had somebody driving your car. No, I didn't. He goes, yeah, you did. She said, hands them the keys. And it is a really big inconvenience on your part that, you know, we had to drive her to school. We took the keys away for three weeks, drive her to every practice, get her to the games, get her home. But she never, ever, ever did it again. And of course, I had two other daughters after her that saw that and they never did it. So it really is a huge deterrent. So if it's points or if it's just, you know, lose the license for 30 days, uh, you know, I absolutely agree, especially for, for this, that is really a, a safety mm -hmm. issue. Mine really wasn't. It was more of a financial okay. hit to us if something happened yeah. with somebody else driving. But yeah. Yeah, we all have my 
daughter too was was the one that after the two thank like, God they're, uh, you know i've done my job they, they're grown they're out of the house they have their own home so it's like okay yeah we can tell stories now right yes. all, you, all, all you current parents take note yes yes that it is it is only good you think it's bad now wait yeah <laughs> yeah Oh yeah. <laughs> so I've got two, if it's okay, I've got two thoughts. I don't know if they're actually questions, but it's a, um, with the tech now, my goodness, my car has got more gadgets and gadgets and things that do, there's a button that pushes and a voice comes through. Can we help you? Cause my grandson hit the SOS thing and I couldn't figure out how to turn it off or I've got a, I've got a new password now. But anyway, there is technology now that will shut your phone off when you get in the car. It won't let you do these things, maybe under an emergency, correct? I don't think you have to have that answer, but I think some of what's coming in the technology of cars is gonna help with, with this part in the safety. We should probably find out. We had manufacturers in yesterday. Too bad we, we had manufacturers, auto manufacturers in yesterday. We could have asked them about this part. And then my second part of it is gets to the point of the, you know, do we have a crash? What we call, you know, crash for, if you get DUI, you go to crash. Do we have a sort of a crash for texting? You get picked up that education. Now, not only did you lose your license or whatever, but, but now you're going to spend two or three weekends um, looking at like, uh, like Miss Gray had said of families that have had, or the impact of what it is sort of a little bit of your scared straight kind of thing, but we don't have a distracted driving crash course, do we? I'm not, not, I'm one, that, not one that's mandated. I mean, I, I will tell you in some of the cases that I've had like excessive speed one where someone's going, that's one thing that I have done. We have like what's called a safe driving that involves, Okay. and I should go and look at it more often, but that involves multiple things. There's one that I was just looking at because some some ca some other states actually have a traffic ticket diversion where they say instead of paying the fine and the points, if right. you go through this six hour four hour program, you don't right. have to do that. And we there are some courses that look good, and I think they can use a conjunction. My understanding, there's nothing that's mandated in Vermont similar to crash. Something to consider. All right, Miss Gray, are you are you? Finish with your testimony. Yep. And if yep. okay, there's anybody else, um, I think the sheriff needed to go. Yep. And so next we have um, Helen Cloud. Did I lose you? There, there you are. Would you like to to give us some commentary on this? Oh, Representative White has her hand up. Oh, she's down. Thank, well, thanks, Madam Chair. <laughs> Sorry, I did have a question um, for the uh, prosecutor or. Sorry, my your title escapes me. I apologize. Our uh, our lovely friend in the court system, Hel uh, Heather Gray. Um, if I could ask that. Sure, go ahead. Um, so one of the concerns that uh, because I, I'm again I am actually really interested in this bill, but I do have concerns. The ACLU um, one of their concerns that they raised up and and they've done they've it's kind of a similar thread that they've talked about for a lot of increased fines or increased points or anything like that is the concern that this will just uh, continue the trend of pulling over brown and black drivers at a greater rate um, or using this as a tool to prosecute um, with a heavier hand for um, drivers of color. Um, I wonder if you could speak at all to that um, and if you see any implications <laughs> with, this, with, the, with the bill we have in front of us. You know, and I, that, that had come up a couple of years ago when I was um, testifying on the oral fluids bill, it was the same thought. And I'm not really, I'm very sensitive of that. And actually my snippet other is a person of color. He's also a police officer, but, um, and, and he's sensitive to that because growing up, um, he certainly had that. I don't, I don't see that here. I just don't know how the two get married. I feel like, yes, I think there are times and there are times that people profile and they shouldn't. And that's not okay. I'm not sure how this bill does that. Um, you'd 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 have to have the action itself. And if you want to pull someone over for a, something that's not appropriate, it's going to happen regardless if you have this or something else. Unless you have training for that person who's doing that. Unless you have mm -hmm. the implicit bias and the fair and policing training. And if you chain and if someone continues to do that, 
I mean, my thought with that is, and I do think that there are, there can be um, issues and we see the t- statistics that come out. And my thought is that is drilling down deeper on those stops and who's doing the stops. Is it the same officer? What training have they have? Have we sent them to the same training? Do we need to send them to another training? What is it that's not connecting? I don't think that it's necessarily the abilities for our bills or the strike that they, the laws that are enabling that. I think it's more, you have to drill down deeper than that. And I do think that's problem that needs to be looked at, but I think that's what it is like on the surface to say we have stricter laws. So it's going to impact people and minority people of color. I, I just don't see the connection. I would more, I think you need to drill down on why those stops are happening. Um, and then th- the converse happens Then people get afraid to stop anyone. And because right. they're a person of color and that's almost the same thing, but reverse, right? We're still using what they look like or who they are. To, and yeah. So sorry to go on, but because it, it is something that that concerns me, but I feel like it's it's something that that's just scratching the surface. We need to drill down deeper. And this is something that's dangerous. And no matter who does it, it's dangerous. And that's how we have to, I would look at it. Thank you. And I appreciate sure. you taking my hand, um, Madam Chair. <laughs> I knew I wanted to get that question in somewhere. <laughs> you're, you're welcome. And I think it sparked Representative Stebbins has something to Thanks, Madam Chair. Um, one of the things I noticed with the um, seatbelt law um, that Re- Representative Till had um, uh, presented was the, you know, the tracking of, you know, uh, who gets pulled over. And I don't know if this is an appropriate time to ask this, but I, I don't, um, as, as a newcomer to this uh, committee, I don't personally know uh, what we currently track. I remember that this committee did say we do track stuff, but I don't know what it is. And um, if in this, um, if there would be tracking of that data um, so that we could actually see um, to Representative White's question, um, whether or not there are trends there that we should then address in a different way. And can I just add to the, or just the tracking of the data around the stops for texting and distracted driving you meant? And how do we collect it or how is that collected? Yeah, if I, um, I, I mean, I'll pull it up really quickly. Uh, if I recall correctly, um, sorry, I should have pulled this up before. Um, uh, Almost there. Uh, oh, I will look here. You, Representative Stebbins, while you're looking, what yep. Representative Shaw's hand is up. So, what if that's all right with you? We'll or maybe maybe I can help. Representative I did Representative just find it. Stebbins. Maybe okay. I can help Representative Stebbins here. The Criminal Justice Council does track all that uh, uh, that that data. Uh, They have been doing it now for, gosh, I'd say at least five, maybe more years. Uh, They are required to report to the legislature every year, that data. Uh, I'm not sure where it goes, as much of the data, if anything that comes to the legislature, sometimes goes into a really black hole. But that data has, it is being tracked, uh, and it is uh, is available to us uh, at, at, at any moment. And actually, we strengthened that data collection last uh, session, and I can't remember the bill number, but it was the, one of the new policing bills that we did late in the session. We strengthened that data collection and uh, the response to it. And actually, I think we're, uh, we actually, we as a state, we don't compile the data. We have a, uh, uh, a contractor that compiles and analyzes that data for us and then reports back, trying not to get the, uh, the data uh, uh, manipulated uh, coming through. So yeah, we do track all that data now. Thank you, uh, Thank you. Sir, I, I did find it. I guess um, I will take a look at 23 VSA section 1259 because uh, that's where the safety belts language was. And I guess I'm just curious why all of that data would have been put into um, Representative Till's bill and whether or not um, we would need to make sure if we did have this uh, texting piece move forward, whether or not we should make sure that that's called out as also being captured in the data collection. Does that make any sense? 
I think so. I need a little more on that one, but it's in other words, you've 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 got a point that you want to make sure it gets captured. And I think I think uh, working with Representative Shaw on what he mentioned on the council and what they collect might be a good good place to start. Okay. Or even finish or start in the middle. Okay. If we're good with Ms. Heather, we're good. Why don't we move on to our, our final witness this morning is uh, Kellen Cloud. Can you state for the record who you are and where you're from, sir? Yes, my name is Kellen Cloud and I work with, uh, I'm the Director of Operations for Green Mountain Flagging. Okay. Can you hear me? Yes. Okay. Okay. Um, we are a member of the Associated General Contractors of Vermont. Um, and first, I'd like to say that we do support this bill. Um, it seems like something that is going to help safety in the work zones, um, which is something we certainly focus on. Yeah. Um, I have been in this business. I've been a flagger since uh, 2008, so about 13 years now. And, you know, during that time, I have certainly experienced um, many situations that do that are due to distracted driving um, you know in, including I I have had to jump out of the way for folks who just didn't notice me in my bright yellow um, <laughs> looking like a banana out there uh, you know to having uh, rear ends in a stopped line of traffic. Uh, folks were distracted and ran into the second car in line who ran into the first who almost hit me as, as it, you know, um, as that momentum took it, moved everybody. Uh, we've had people run, run our stop signs. And, you know, the risk to that is not just us as a flagger, but also that vehicle now going either into the work zone and hitting the flag, the uh, workers in there or driving into a hole that's in the road. Um, but, you know, if traffic has been sent from the other direction, now there's a potential head on collision. So, you know, for us, this is, this is a key point to, uh, to, Maintaining that safety and that uh, you know, everybody goes home at the end of the day. Um, yep. Yep. Thank you. I was just welcome. To say it, we've we've been hearing quite a few things around the the safety and work zones um, uh, this year, uh, and concern as to not so much that it's not an issue. How do we address the issue? Is the question right? Yes. Um, yeah, thank you. I see, I see your colleague is here. I don't know if if Matt, you are with us. Did you have something you wanted to add, or are you here for support? Well, well <laughs> I don't uh, want to put you on the spot, sir. I just want to make sure that I I give you um, space if you need it or want. Well, I am sinking down so you don't see that I'm not wearing a tie because I didn't plan to speak, but. I will appreciate the opportunity to just say a couple of words um, because the Associated General, first of all, thank you, Kellen. Um, second of all, um, the Associated General Contractors operates a program called Project Road Safe, which is from a, a federal grant uh, to help keep the traveling public educated on road safety, which includes not only commercial drivers, but also uh, young drivers and learning drivers. And one of the programs that we administer is called the Live at 25, um, which is a program where um, young people, I, and I, we have seen old people, older people in the, the class, but for younger drivers or newer drivers, uh, it's a class where they come in here and we actually talk to them about the science of a, an automobile accident, a collision, and uh, some ways for them to stay safe. It's a program that a judge can ask um, uh, a someone that has committed uh, a traffic offense to come and take as a condition of their license. But, so that's all I have to say. Thank you for having me in. You're welcome. That's very helpful. I mean, we're talking like my time, you know, 
our our uh, driver ed class and the AV cart and the, and the horror movies about you know what happens if you don't wear your seatbelt and you know um, so there's there's better ways today. <laughs> much better way so that's good to know i mean that is that was what i was thinking that uh, punitive is one thing but punitive without the education and the ability to 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 restore or get get to the heart of what you're trying to do is 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 um the real answer representative shaw do you have a question sir i just have a comment i think madam chair if i may so I, I just want to express the fact that what we're talking about is, is a real world situation. And for me, it goes beyond uh, points. It goes beyond money and fines. And it's been my experience, and I think it probably has been represented a savage experience uh, through our career in, in, in emergency EMS uh, operations, uh, that texting, uh, while operating a motor vehicle has real world, real world consequences. So is, is, is fines the right thing to do or, or, or whatever? I, I'm not sure. I don't, don't think how much we charge people money or how, we, how many points we put on our license. We have a societal problem that we need to text at all times. In the recent past, uh, in, in, in my, my own town, uh, there was a crash in front of the local high school that killed two elderly people. The driver that hit them head on uh, had just put his, he was not texting during the crash, but moments before the crash, he was texting. So he was obviously distracted. He was found guilty of other charges because they could not prove the texting piece was happening during the crash. They could prove it happened before. These things have real world consequences. We just saw uh, recently a crash in Shalott, on the Shalott Hill, just above that five, where uh, a young lady uh, came across the highway and ran head on into a, another vehicle and killed two people. That case went into juvenile court. We did not, we never uh, did learn of what really seriously happened to, to, for the cause of that crash. But there was suspicions that texting was involved. Not too far from my house, a local farmer was working on his fence. Him and his son were working on their fence next to the road uh, with their pickup truck parked to protect them while they were working near the road. Uh, a person, uh, came up over a little rise in the hill, ran into the pickup, bounced off the pickup, and hit both the farmers. They've since sold their herd. They can no, neither one of them can no longer farm. They still have the property, but they've sold the herd. The person that hit them was so addicted, and this is a, I think this is an addiction, was so addicted to texting, she was admitted at the scene in front of many of us that she was texting when she hit the truck. But she was so addicted, she was texting while we were loading the victims into the back of an ambulance to tell her friends what happened. Texting while driving has real world consequences beyond points, beyond losing your license. It has, it, texting while driving can ruin families can take people from us, can take people, vic the victims of texting while driving. Uh, I've been in construction zones when people are texting. It is not, I, I think I had this when we were talking about uh, uh, being protected by a cone when we talked about uh, uh, the uh, speeding through construction zones. So I'll, I'll come back to that. But I, that's just my thought. And I don't have, a, I haven't formulated a full thought on the bill yet, but I'd like to be able to formulate a thought on how we stop it. And, I'm not sure, and uh, to Representative Smith and, and the other witnesses, I'm not sure that increasing fines or increasing uh, penalties uh, is, is, is going to work. Uh, but we need to think about what will work. And I want to thank you for the time, Madam Chair. Mr. Vice Chair, you are so eloquent and well said, sir. Well said. Um, I agree. 
you bring it back to the real world. Thank you. Representative Savage. Savage. Well, thank you, Madam Chair. And I, I certainly agree 100% with everything that uh, Representative uh, Shaw has mentioned. Um, been there, done that uh, with, um, unfortunately, with uh, oftentimes uh, very tragic results. I, uh, and I do agree, I think it's an addiction. Um, and um, uh, I never, um, well, my, my kids were all grown and out of the house when texting really came into uh, the spotlight. Um, and I uh, never realized just how, how much people text until I was having dinner one night and there were two young people at the table with us um young teenagers both of whom were talking to each other but by doing so at the same table by texting and i i just i couldn't i just couldn't get over that um <clears throat> so um uh i i i think it's um uh and i haven't taken a position yet on this bill i i i um uh I understand where Representative Smith certainly comes from, and I, I, um, uh, it's um, probably another tool in the toolbox. Um, but um, I, I'm not sure how we're going to change people's behavior, um, and um, so that's uh, that's all I would say. And I think we certainly can have a a good discussion, and this was a good start today. Thank you. Thank you, Representative Savage. I, I do appreciate Representative Smith bringing, bringing back to our attention the issue and that uh, we give it some space to hear about it. And, and I think the committee is committed to finding some answers. We don't know if this is the answer, but I think we're committed to taking, you know, we, we're, this is our first, first part of this biennium and I don't think this is going away anytime soon. Representative Smith, do you want to finish it up and uh, and uh, certainly okay certainly I would, Madam Chair. Thank you. Uh, I can appreciate all of the concerns about this bill, but nothing has worked so far. Uh, you still have, just for example, a, a DUI today. You, they, someone will take their license for ninety days. If you've got a, a person with a CDL, they, all they need is to be 0.3 and they lose their license for 90 days, I believe, uh, even if they're sober. That's, that's a shame to take someone's driver's license away for 90 days. Uh, this bill here, uh, you take, like uh, Miss Gray said, uh, uh, the length of a football field will kill someone. It'll kill someone's wife, one of our committee members, kids, or one of our committee members, spouses. Uh, this remedy may be a bit aggressive, but is this bill too aggressive if it saves one life? Ask yourselves that. If it saves one life, is this bill too aggressive? Uh, I, I, I don't have a problem uh, reducing the fines, but uh, as Ms. Gray had mentioned, uh, points scare people more than money does nowadays and if we could stick with the points on it i think that would be a pretty good remedy uh whether it be the only remedy i don't know but i know that uh, it's happening all the time and if i drove from here to newport five miles from here i could probably count 10 people texting and driving and if one of them's looking down and runs into me and kills me i'm 70 and i don't want i don't want to leave this planet at 70 years old i want to be 100 and uh and that's my plan and i i sincerely hope that this committee will support this bill because it's pretty darn important to every vermonter that drives on the road thank you that's all i have thank you sir i think you're um uh, you're bringing up the continued conversation around something that's that's happening out there and and that's why we're we're here today to hear about it um so with that committee, unless there's any other committee or questions, I think we can let our guests go and thank thank you for your time. Yeah, thank you all. In the state of Vermont. And uh, uh, we'll 
we'll continue to have a conversation with you if, if and when we have any questions, if that's okay with you. We thank Representative Smith for bringing this to our attention again, and we'll, we'll committed to keep the conversation going. Um, so committee, um, with that, it's 1130, it's Friday, keeping in time, uh, uh, we're, we're not meeting officially in the afternoon. People have work, people have other committee committees to work on. And um, I'm committed to working with Representative Shaw, and our committee assistant to figure out a landing schedule. Sometimes I look at the next week or so thinking, we've got a lot of time. And then within, within an hour, I feel like, oh, we, we, we just never have enough time. But we'll, but we'll try to work that together. And we'll wish Representative Corkin, you're gonna visiting this afternoon in judiciary and at least get an essential uh, feedback on what, what they're thinking. Also on that note, I did send last night the entire S47 to Commerce, at least asking the chair and the vice chair if they'd like to take a, a moment to, to look at the, the bill and if they had any commentary on it. Um, okay, we're getting an official uh, uh, notice of, of, well, anyway, I'll finish reading that in a second. So I think we're, I think we're good, but I think the agency is listening and would like to, like to recognize that of their, their, their shortcomings on not being able to notify us earlier on Amtrak. So they, they are responding as quickly as, as possible to us. And we'll, we'll continue that conversation next week. So uh, committee, I think that's it. Um, if you have other thoughts or something you forget over the weekend, I'll be, I'll be here later this afternoon. I'll be here at my desk on uh, definitely on Monday all day. We've got coffee chat tomorrow with constituents and then I'm gonna go play with my grandson and I'm going outside. That's, we're gonna get basketball in because I wanna live to 102 Representative Smith and I'm not gonna be doing it if I'm sitting in this chair. <laughs> Is that a challenge? 102 or 100 as well? No, we no, might... 100 as well. Okay. We, we might wanna stay off the Wait, road if that's the plan. Well, you know. I thought you were challenging him. You want 100? I want 102. Anybody else? 104? Yeah. 105? Yeah. We have, I have a great grandmother that when I was in high school, when they walked on the moon, she, I got to sit to watch with her when, when they, when, um, when they walked on the moon and she was born when Lincoln was president. Oh, wow. Just imagine her life and came here from Ireland in 1890. Yeah. Oh, anyway. Yeah. Yeah. Just incredible.